Friends, good morning. Welcome to Worldverse. As I said last week, we completed our series of studies on Luke's Gospel. And I want to move on today into a book that sometimes doesn't get enough recognition, in my estimation anyway. And that's Paul's letter to the Galatians. It's a very important letter, and I want to spend some time with that. Just want to lay some foundations this morning. And I'm not going to take the letter verse by verse but simply to pull out of it things that are important. And I think by way of introduction, the core issue of this letter of Paul to Galatia is about justification. That's a big word. Someone once said to me, the best way to understand the word justification is to say, just as if I'd. Justification is God looking at me just as if I'd never sinned, and so on and so on. That's the core issue here that Paul is trying to get through to the people of Galatia. How does a person gain stature with God? The Jewish rules and regulations said that Christ plus circumcision equals right standing. Now, Paul sets out to change that. Paul's equation was different, that grace plus nothing equals right standing. In other words, Any relationship is about God's grace. And this finds its way right through this letter. It's very important that we understand this. Think about it. Paul's letter to the Galatians changed Martin Luther. I know we all know about Martin Luther. He, after studying this letter, recognized the false teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. And it was Martin Luther who set about trying to clarify that. He discovered that the central truth of the Christian gospel is that we obtain salvation not by any church or following any law or any man, but solely by God's grace. Ephesians says it too. In Ephesians 2 verse 8, it is by grace that we are saved by faith. And this is the core, the fundamental of of what Paul is trying to say in this letter to the Galatians, we try to find our salvation by doing, by the things that we do, trying to please God by keeping the rules and the regulations, and we try to do it by our own power. And this whole letter is trying to say to the Galatians that it's not about what I do, it's not about what you do, It's about what God does in our lives that is the core and the fundamental. And so the core issue of the letter to the Galatians is justification, just as if I'd never sinned. How we do that? Well, the lawmakers in those days said it has to do with circumcision and keeping the law and all the rest. And Paul simply says it's by grace Nothing else. It is by grace. We are put right in a relationship with God, not by what we do, but by what God has done, which is basically the story of Jesus Christ. It's by faith in Jesus Christ that we are brought into a right relationship with God. So often the world tries to please God by following various religious rules and rituals and you've got to do this and you mustn't do that. And if you stop and think about it, we are trying to be holy by our own power. And we're never going to get that right. And it's out of God's great love and mercy that God opens the door to heaven for sinful people. And it comes by believing in Jesus Christ. It is only by faith in Christ that we can move through this door, if you like. And it's the main teaching of this letter to the Galatians. It's Paul trying to help the people of Galatia understand that it's not what they must do, but what God has done. And recognizing that I can respond to what God has done. I don't have to do anything else. I just have to respond to what God has done through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and by the power of his spirit 
It's done, my friends. We don't have to do anything. All we have to do is have faith. It's faith that the work has been completed. Jesus saw to that. All he's asking us to do is to come into relationship with him. And so this letter is about that. It's about getting into a right relationship with God. And it has nothing to do with circumcision and keeping the law per se. It's about Jesus Christ plus nothing else makes for a right relationship with God. I don't have to do it. You don't have to do it, my friends. Jesus has done it. All he's asking, or I'm asking, is let's have faith. Let's believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, for my sins? If we believe that and we respond to that, it's enough. It's enough. Because that's the fundamental. Once we've accepted this, we begin to then build onto the reality that it's not about what we do. It's about what has been done. And I can leave it there. We can start picking it up next week. And there's all sorts of issues for us to deal with there. And I won't bore you with the details at this moment. It's going to take us till the new year to deal with this. And so I pray, just for now, hear my call. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Do you believe that he defeated death? by his own resurrection, and that all he calls us to do is believe. I can leave it there. Let's pray, my friends. Father, thank you. Thank you that we don't have to do anything. You've done it. All you call us for, or call us to, is faith. Just to allow you to take residence in our lives to be part of all we are doing and are going to do with our lives and allowing you to direct and guide and lead us. And to that end, we simply put our lives into your hands this morning and invite you to lead us where you want us to be. And that will be enough. So thank you for our time this morning, O God, and I pray your blessing on us now as we go our separate ways. Amen. Have a blessed day, my friends.